It's a stream deck. So I do a fair amount of video editing, and lately I've been trying to up my game as far as editing efficiency. So I edit in Final Cut, and I'm entirely self-taught. Now the problem with learning on your own with video editing, at least the problem that I ran into, is that you learn new things by running into problems and then looking up the solution. So you just hit a wall, oh, here's a situation where I really need to do that green screen thing. What is that? How does that work? Look it up, learn how to chroma key. Uh, this footage doesn't really look the way that I want it to look. How do I alter the colors and stuff? Look it up, learn about color grading. But eventually you hit this wall where the problems that you're aware of, you've solved, but still, you don't know what else you don't know. And so I kind of fell into some complacency where I was editing in my own little groove and I knew that there were probably better ways to do a lot of the things that I was doing, but eh, this is the way I've always done it. This is the way I know how to do it. Let's just get this project done. But video editing programs, Final Cut included, have tons of nooks, crannies, corners, and keyboard shortcuts. So many keyboard shortcuts. So I've been exploring all of those nooks and crannies and keyboard shortcuts, trying to find ways to make my editing flow more efficient. And this is part of that initiative for me. So if you're unfamiliar, a stream deck is essentially a panel of buttons and those buttons are programmable and they have little LCD screens behind them so you can change what's on the button. And there are other products like that. Stream Deck is a particular product made by Elgato. Elgato is owned by Corsair. And they're called Stream Decks because their main intended use case is for live streaming. So you can push these different buttons on your Stream Deck to interface with something like OBS to change what's happening on screen. But they're useful for a ton of other stuff. For example, video editing. So they come in six, 15, and 32 uh, button key configurations. I have the 15 key here, but those buttons go further than you'd think because you can have folders. You can have a button that's a folder and then you open that up and all of the buttons change to what's inside of that folder. And you can have different contexts. So when Final Cut is open, I can have a different set of buttons and actions than I have when I'm just on my desktop. So within Final Cut, maybe there are certain keyboard shortcuts that I feel like would be useful, but maybe they're going to be hard for me to remember, or I just find the keystroke that I have to make with my hand uncomfortable, or whatever. I can just program it to a button, and boom, there it is. And that's on the simple side. You can get pretty complex with these, tying different actions together, even getting things like Keyboard Maestro involved, which is an automation program that's on the Mac. So yeah, it's gonna be a lot to dive into, but once I get it settled, I really think it's going to make me a much more efficient video editor and more efficient person overall. So I'm gonna dive in and start poking around. Okay, so let me show you what I came up with here. I am editing this very video that you're watching right now. Very meta, I know. So my most used buttons kind of live in this lower right-hand corner. I keep the stream deck on the left side of my laptop so I wanted my most used buttons in this corner because that's closest to me. So if I move the playhead here, this button in the lower right hand corner is play pause. When I actually have my hand resting on it, which I won't do much in this because it blocks the entire stream deck, but it rests right under my thumb, which is helpful because that's exactly where it would sit on the keyboard. I would hit the space bar with my thumb. So it feels very natural to have it there. Now the blade and these two buttons have helped my workflow tremendously. So like I edit most of my videos with jump cuts. So I don't really super plan stuff out. Like I don't have scripts. I just kind of come up with what I'm gonna say on the spot, I'll talk. You can see the waveforms here and then there's a period of silence and then I talk again. So here's how I used to cut out all of that silence. I would pull up the blade tool. I would click on the end there. I would scroll to the next waveform. I would click there. I would switch to the select tool. I would click on the part in the middle and I would delete it. But as it turns out, that's a really inefficient way to do that. So let me undo all of that. By the way, I do have undo in the upper left-hand corner here so I can undo from the stream deck. So now what I do is I move the playhead over where the first waveform ends. I click my blade button that makes a cut. Then I bring the playhead over to where the next waveform begins and I can click this and that just trims out all of the middle without me having to click again and click in the middle and all of that stuff. It saves quite a few clicks. So it's only two button presses now, one to make a cut 
and then I just move the playhead to where I need everything to go. And then the next button press deletes everything in between the cut and where the playhead is. And you can do that either to the left or to the right of the playhead. And the keyboard shortcut for that, by the way, is option and then either left or right bracket, depending on which way you're trying to trim. Now still focusing on this main lower right hand rectangle. Um, underneath the blade, I have this icon with two blades, that's blade all. So like for example, if I had multiple clips, let's just make a stack here. And then I wanted to cut all of them at once, I can click blade all and then that will cut through both clips or however many clips there are. I have no idea what the keyboard shortcut for that is. It doesn't matter because I only had to look it up once and now it lives on my stream deck. Now these two buttons here will select the edge of a clip, either the left edge or the right edge. I typically use these buttons in combination with this button, which is add the default transition. So I would select a clip's edge like that, click this button and that would create a transition. I have my default transition set to the swoopy whoopy thing. And next to the default transition, I have a button for a default title. So that's just a quick way to add some basic text. Wowee, text. Up here is undo, we've already discussed that. This button just opens up a folder where I keep screenshots because I use screenshots a lot in my videos. As you can see, when I open that screenshot folder, uh, the focused window is now Finder, it's no longer Final Cut. And so it switches the profile on my stream deck. So this is now the default profile, but as soon as I switch the focus back to Final Cut, it will switch back to the Final Cut options. Now this button right here, this pulls up a handy little program I have called Yoink. Boop. So Yoink is like a little shelf that you can keep files and you can either just drag them there temporarily so they can just sit on that shelf and you can pull them up and drag them out when you need to. And you can also pin files onto the shelf. So I have pinned a bunch of asset files that I use a lot in my videos. Like this is kind of a blue moving background thing that I use a lot when a screenshot doesn't fill up the entire screen or something, I'll, I'll use that background. I've got this little pointy finger man that I use a lot. Got my little, my little like button, be sure to hit like by the way. My little subscribe thing, which I will then chroma key out the green part, be sure to subscribe by the way. So yes, yeah, so all of my just frequently used assets, I keep them in Yoink and then I have them at the push of a button. Boop, there's all my assets. This is the delete key, I don't know if I told you that, but that's what that is, boop. Yeah, if you're on a Mac, I definitely do recommend Yoink. It's pretty handy. It's, it's not free, but it wasn't expensive either. I don't remember exactly how much it was, but it definitely worth it. All right, this button up here adds my default effect. Kind of wish I could keep default effect next to default title and default transition, but there's just no room, so eh, whatever. But I think I have my default effect set to just like a very slow zoom in, so it'll just kind of like start out and very slowly punch in as the clip progresses. And then finally up here is a button for speed blade. So pressing that will cut the speed so that I can change how this duration is. So that's now going to be 143% speed. This gray area is the transition between 143% and 100%. Maybe I wanted this part to be slowed down. This is how you do speed ramping. So um, I use that every once in a while in my montages or some action shots or something like that. For my default profile, I mostly just have some frequently used apps. Quick links up here, this will take me to my work email and this will take me to my personal email. This in the upper right hand corner is the app switcher so I can pull it up to just quickly toggle between apps. This up here shows me my next upcoming calendar event so it's, it counts down to it and it changes color as it approaches. It'll turn yellow and then red as it gets closer and closer. Helpful for keeping me from missing meetings and stuff. Then this button I used as a button that will switch to another profile. I'm basically using it as a second page. And here I have a button that'll sleep the computer and buttons that control the brightness of the Stream Deck itself. And then this button switches back to the main profile. I could have just put a folder here instead of switching profiles. It would have accomplished the exact same thing. It's also been great for zoom. So down here on the bottom row, I have basic controls for zoom, like turn the camera on and off, uh, mute the mic, leave the meeting, screen share, stuff like that. But I've also used this to uh, ruin every zoom meeting I've ever been in because I'm basically using it as a soundboard. So you can drag in audio files and then as soon as you push the button, it just plays that audio file. And I just think it's pretty awesome! <laughs> All right, so now after working with the Stream Deck for a couple of months now, I gotta say, I like it a lot. I consider it a vital part of my workflow now. It has definitely helped me make my video editing more efficient. Now, I gotta be clear about this. The Stream Deck doesn't do 
anything for video editing that you can't do with your keyboard. It's, it's really just shortcuts for shortcuts. It's just pressing the keyboard shortcuts for you. At least for what I'm using it for, that's really all it's doing. Which I know doesn't really sound all that helpful, but it just, it is, I promise it is. There's something about just having this separate panel of physical buttons that is just very pleasing and it just makes the workflows stick better for me. And it's nice to not have to remember a bunch of keyboard shortcuts. I can just program them onto the Stream Deck and that's it, I'm done. By the way, if you're curious, all of the icons I had on the Stream Deck for my Final Cut profile, uh, I did buy an icon pack for that. I'll put a link to that in the description down below. Now, you don't have to buy an icon pack. You can just get icons off of Google Images or you can make your own or whatever. And actually in a recent update, the, the Stream Deck software that it comes with actually has some like community uh, icon packs in there. I used a few of those built-in ones for my uh, Photoshop profile, but from what I've seen so far, those, those are pretty limited, so you'll probably still have to fill in a lot of gaps. Now I will say that when picking out a size of Stream Deck, I, I did think that the 15 key was going to be more than enough. And for just like navigating the computer stuff day to day, it, it is, but for video editing in particular, and probably for Photoshop, I haven't finished building that profile out yet, but I could see a use for, for more keys. I, I do find myself already fantasizing about that 32 key configuration stream deck. Oh, give me that big deck. I just can't fit everything on the Stream Deck, and that's where I keep my left hand now. So right hand on the mouse, left hand on the Stream Deck, and every time I have to lift my hand from the Stream Deck to the keyboard for something, I'm a little bit pissed off. Now I know I said at the beginning of the video that the keys go farther than you think because you can have folders, and that is true, but the problem is digging through folders is not any faster than just switching my hand over to the keyboard, and if I'm going to have a folder, I'm sacrificing a key where that folder has to sit. So now on my main page, I have one less functional button. So I don't actually use folders very much. Something else to note about the 32 key version is that that one does have a removable USB-C cable. So it's USB-C and it plugs into the Stream Deck and then it's got another male end on the other side. Whereas the two smaller versions of the Stream Deck are USB-2 and it's not an easily replaceable cable. It's soldered in on the Stream Deck side. So I don't know, maybe one day I will get a 32 key version and use that as kind of my permanent setup one that just sits on the desk somewhere and then I'll keep the 15 key as kind of the portability option. But anyways, that's all I got for today. Be sure to hit like if you liked the video. Be sure to leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. And be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so that YouTube notifies you anytime I upload a new video. This is a brand new YouTube channel and I could really use your help getting it off the ground. Appreciate it. Peace.